Welcome to the third training video for desktop automation in Leapwork. We'll continue where we left off in lesson two and look more into reusable subflows and how you can drive the automation flows with data from external sources. More specifically, we'll look at how we create a reusable subflow that'll handle the process of creating a new contact and how to pull the input data from an external Excel sheet. We have an example flow which opens the demo application and logs in using the login subflow that we created in the previous lesson. What I want to do now is first to create a subflow that can create a new contact. This means click the new button, fill in at least the mandatory fields, and then ending by clicking the save button. To create this subflow, we need to start by creating the flow that will do the actual functionality that we want to wrap up in the subflow. The first action here is to click on the new button. So I'll add a click UI block and capture the new button. If we run this block, we'll see an empty contact form opening up. Now, in this lesson, we'll focus on the mandatory fields of last name, first name, and email, all with the little red asterisk next to them. For each of the fields, we'll add a set value block that'll capture the field and insert the value for the field. So starting with the last name, set UI value, capturing the field, and using the value last name. And for the first name, similarly, a set UI element. And finally, for the email, just a random email address. And then we save this contact by clicking on the Save button. So a click element and capturing the Save button. Finally, we'll add a pass block. At this stage, we have a full flow of creating one new contact, and we can now turn this into a subflow. I'll do this by selecting all the building blocks, actually creating the new contract, starting with the click on the new button, or ending with click on save, right-clicking on any of them, and choose Create Subflow. All the selected blocks are now wrapped into one new subflow, and you'll recognize these by their purple color on the canvas. I'll just rename this subflow to Create New Contact. Subflows has a lot of advantages. First of all, we can create and encapsulate the functionality we want and make sure that we don't recreate the same functionality over and over again, thereby saving time as well as ensuring consistency. Second, the subflow will help us to maintain the overview on the canvas by grouping other building blocks and thereby limiting the number of blocks we have to overview on the canvas. And third, you can have subflows within subflows and thereby build a hierarchy of blocks covering an entire application. This way, any automation flow will be an orchestration of functionality in the subflows, which is much easier to manage. If I double-click the subflow, it opens up in a new tab. And we can see that the entire flow is now surrounded by some special building blocks called execution input and execution output. These blocks define the green connectors on the subflow on the canvas, and it's possible to add more connectors depending on the functionality in each subflow. 
The next obvious question after creating a subflow that sets values in fields are, can I add data to this or can I parameterize it? And yes, you can, which leads us directly to the final question in this case, can I drive the flow using external data? And yes, you can. LeapWorks ships with a number of building blocks supporting it getting external data to drive into your flow. There are building blocks to fetch data from databases. Any ODPC enabled database connection can be used by LeapWork. It could also be a web service, or you could have built your own functionality in PowerShell, which you would then invoke using a command line. This could also be the case for bat files. You can find much more information about these data driving building blocks in our learning center and at the advanced features section. The most used building block for pulling data into automation flows, however, is the Excel building block, which we will be using in this particular lesson. I add a read Excel building block and I place that in front of the new create contact subflow. Rearrange the connections. and select a file on my local hard drive. I've prepared one in advance on my desktop, then wipe up new contact. And then I click define to select the data range that I want to use to drive the flow with. Simply select the desired data, check the use first row as a header and click save. By using the first row as a header, LeapWork now understands what fields are available for each data row in the selected range. To use the data from the Excel sheet, it would be nice to just be able to pull the fields onto the create new contact subflow and in that way create a data connection. And we can actually do that. I'll go back into the subflow and focus on the fields where we've hard coded the values here, here and here. Instead of hard coding these, we can add a value input block, which is used to define input fields for a subflow. So value input. The first one I will call last name and then connect whatever value is added to this block into the value field of the set value building block. I'll do the same for first name. drive it into the value field here. And finally, for the email. Click Save. And when I go back to my flow, you will see that I now have three new fields added to the subflow. And now it's easy. I'll simply connect the corresponding fields using the blue connectors. So first name to first name, just rearrange a bit, last name accordingly, and obviously email. This means that when we execute the create new contact subflow, it will get the input data from the Excel sheet and insert these into the contact form. Let's try and run the flow. First, I'll close down the demo application and press play. As we can see, it ended up in pass. And if I go back into the application and search for Bill, you will see that I have a new contact person in here. And this is the first contact that we actually defined in the Excel sheet. So what if we want to add all three contact persons that we selected in the Excel sheet? 
Well, if I look at the Excel building block, I can see a method field with the value first row. This is the default value in the building block and means that it'll only read the first row in the selected data range. If I select row index, we can specify exactly what row to use, one, two, three, four, and so forth. And finally, if I choose iterate, the top connector on the block will be executed for each data row in the selected data range. In this case, it will create a new contact based on the individual rows, meaning that we will end up creating three new contacts. When all the rows in the Excel sheet have been iterated, the completed connector is triggered and we can continue the flow. A flow will stop whenever it encounters a pass or a fail block so in this case, it makes more sense to move the pass block down here to ensure that whenever the iteration is completed, that the flow will pass. Let's try to run the flow. I'll close down the demo application and rerun the flow from the start, now with the iterate option chosen in the Excel building block. As we could see, we had three new contacts created based on the data in the Excel sheet. Iterating data like this is a common feature in leap work, regardless if you have a list of rows in a grid, a series of web elements, or a collection of found images. The blocks in leap work will allow you to build a flow to handle the individual elements and then continue your flow after the iteration is done. In this video, we looked at how to create parameterized subflows and how to hook these up with an external data source, in this case, an Excel sheet. We also saw how easy it is to set up an iteration of data. This concludes lesson three.